Hey everyone, Pastor George here with our Bible study recap, and today we looked at Job chapter 3. And uh, just to recap of where we were before, for context, is the first chapter is Job kind of losing all his possessions, right? The devil comes to God, and God says, hey, have you seen Job? He's really th faithful. I don't think anything could could make him curse me, right? And Satan says, oh really? I bet I can make it. So he takes away Job's possessions. And then the next week, something similar happens, and then he takes away Job's health. And so Job is kind of out here by himself, sitting in ashes, scraping himself because he has boils all over his body. And then three of his friends show up, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. And they wait there in silence, as is customary. And they wait there for seven days, probably getting him food, just kind of sitting with him. And then he says this. He says what we read today, right? He goes into this whole little speech lament really because it follows the same kind of pattern that you'll see in the psalms for songs of lament you'll and in jeremiah and other places so he falls into this this lament and in this lament you'll notice that he doesn't curse god right because that's what his wife called him to do the previous time but instead he curses the day he was born and the night that he was conceived and he basically says oh man i wish those things never happened right and he goes in to describe different ways they couldn't have happened like maybe if uh the dawn never rose, or uh, that my parents just rejected me, or uh, that I couldn't nurse at my mother's breast, right? Just like stuff that happened. He even says, uh, and this part might have like freaked, you know, not freaked out, but like surprised, I guess, uh, because it's kind of an odd way to phrase things. But he talks about these people rousing the Leviathan, and the Leviathan's the sea creature, and there's this belief that if you rouse it, it'll come and it'll swallow the sun. So he basically is saying, I wish that they would have called this massive street creature out to, to swallow the sun, right? So that I could never have been born. Um, he wishes that he was dead right, as a child, right? And now he wishes to die again. And you'll see he goes into the second part where he talks about death being this great equalizer, right? That the rich and the poor alike are all equal in the fact that they die. And there, they're all the same, right? It's not as though if you're wealthy in this life, you're going to be wealthy in death or if you're poor in life you're going to be poor in death you're all going to be the same and so that is that is how uh job is seeing these things and uh i think that's really important and it's really interesting to see the depression that job finds himself in this point because uh we usually again right we say this a lot but we usually don't look for places in the bible that back us up we usually tell people it's okay to be upset or it's okay to have feelings, right, and to work through them, um, have depression or something. But we don't really see that. And this is one of the few places in the Bible where we we do. And we we don't, when you're going to see that he isn't actually rebuked entirely by God at the end for all of these things. Like God still hold, hold, will end up holding up Job in a way. But it's, it's good to see how we work through this. But the ideas or the questions that came to my mind were, how do we respond to these things, right? How do we respond when people will say, well, there's no point in, in living life anymore or is life worth living if you know you have this type of, of experience right and I think our answer to that should be well yes right and we talked a little bit about why that is and it's because we bring glory to God and again interestingly enough job is not faulting God at this point he's not cursing God right he's more just saying why did any of this have to happen to begin with wouldn't it have been better if I was just dead. And I think that in this, we see kind of the answer rumbling under the surface, which is that God has a purpose for these things. And there's a glorif glorification that, that comes, but it's like, how do we get to that point, right? And uh, Job, we might want to just rush to the answer, right? That's kind of what a lot of us will do. We'll say, well, this is the answer why, <laughs> right? So we're gonna, we want to go to the end of the book of Job, but... We actually, I think it's really important that Job takes a while to get there as, as a work because its whole purpose is that we have to wrestle through these things and come to understand them for ourselves. And then when we're on the other side, we start to, to do this. But it's th this idea that it's okay to ask questions or this okay to just struggle. And I think that that's good. So Job's biggest fear, you'll notice at the end here, he says, you know, the day that I fear has come upon me, right, or approaches. And... Um, and I think that's really impor important um, because what does he fear? Well, it's clearly not death, 
right? A lot of us will say, well, death is the thing that we fear, but not Job, right? He actually wants to die. What he fears is this spiritual desolation, right? This cut off from God and the loss and the physical suffering that he's experiencing. And so that he's kind of at the lowest point that he could imagine. Um, and so he's trying to understand why. Um, and next week we're going to, or not next week, because I'm going to be on vacation next week. So you're not going to see me for a little while. But uh, when I, and then I'll be in GA, but I'll still try and put out theologues while I'm at GA and stuff. But um, but uh, the next Bible study is going to be in a few weeks. But when we get to that point, we're going to read chap chapters four and five, and we're going to see one of his friends respond to see how he's going to answer what Job has brought. So uh, we're going to see what Eliphaz has to say. But we'll we'll get to that when the time comes. All of you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, and I will see you tomorrow for the mailbag. Peace out.